is built on a fantastic and loved fast-paced recipe. It's got the fantastic multiplayer gameplay that our fans expect, a rich new universe, a solo campaign, and a phenomenally exciting new mechanic in the game called Build and Battle, a system that allows players to build structures dynamically on the fly and make the battlefield play the way they want to play at that time. Warhawk was loved around the world by all of our fans. It was really built on a fast-paced, multi-dimensional gameplay over really broad landscapes. We wanted to go one step further. We really felt that the opportunity was great to make a brand new standout approach to the shooter genre. And that's what led us to Starhawk. In Starhawk, the universe is in the future in the distant reaches of the galaxy, a place we call the frontier. A set of human colonies that have been built up over a number of years, really kind of fueled by what we call the rush, um, kind of our gold rush analog for rift energy. As these rifters, which is our short term for rift miners, were mining rift energy, they found that it was incredibly potent but exposure to rift energy causes them to become infected. The rift energy permeates their body, their mind, their skeleton, and they end up becoming enraged, hell-bent, to protect the rifts from the rifters. And that's one of the factions in our game, the outcast. And they form these roaming war bands that go from corner to corner in the frontier, all the distant colonies. And really, that's at the heart of the conflict in our game. We didn't want it to just be two factions. We wanted there to be a face, a character that in our now included single player campaign that would really connect with players. That's where our character Emmett Graves comes in. He and his brother, a family operation, had a rift claim out in a, a distant planet, you know, as is unfortunate and common in the frontier. An outcast warband rolled in and destroyed their extractor and the rig exploded. As what happens with exposure to rift energy, both brothers were directly exposed. Now, of course, their gear man, Sidney Cutter, who was up in the dropship above, saw all of this happen. Yeah, this is what happens when those mangy creatures take over. It's a shame, I tell you. Cutter was able to modify some of his equipment to create this regulator device and this horrible procedure implanted it directly into Emmett's spine. It's almost a curse. It's incredibly painful for Emmett. And now he bears the mark, the brand, of an outcast warrior, and he became outcast himself. And so Emmett ended up being a hired gun, like a gunslinger, protecting claims, going to colonies that were being attacked by outcast war bands. Anybody that comes out here has a plan or a problem. I came back with both. And so Emmett and Cutter take the rift salvaging operation to protect White Sands, a small colony on the distant moon of dust, from an outcast warband. And so that's the start of the game. Emmett was the hero that they needed, but they didn't want. And not only is that conflict at the core of the game's story and fiction and universe, but it's actually core to our exciting new system in the game called Build and Battle. We decided to say, all right, what if the battlefield was just the landscape, a beautifully rendered canvas? onto which the player could customize in a fast, violent, brutal way that matches the gameplay that they expected from Warhawk. And that's what Build and Battle is. It's a quick, brutal system to allow the player to build wall structures and bases and bunkers and towers and all of these other units and structures in the game to fit how they want to play, not only in single player, but in multiplayer. It's about telling the player, here's a combat challenge and here's all the tools you have to solve it. Solve it how you want, right in front of the player, not turn base, right there on the battlefield. You are building all of these structures. Players love it, not only in single player, but in multiplayer. It's as fast paced and as quick and as brutal as pulling the trigger on a weapon. That's what we wanted. We didn't want players to have to really manage anything. And another fantastic thing about build and battle is that all the buildings are destructible and the firefights evolve from there. Buildings are destroyed, buildings are rebuilt. That freedom, that potential gameplay, takes the great multiplayer recipe we had from Warhawk and just extends it. Starhawk is the spiritual successor to Warhawk, but it's the build and battle system which really sweetens up the whole game. The team and I are just crazy proud of it. It not only gives you a fantastic, infinitely replayable solo experience, but the changes that it does to the online multiplayer experience is remarkable. And I think players are not going to expect that, but once they get it, they'll want it all the time.